This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. We have these parents who are hearing about all these threats to Jewish institutions and uh, wondering if something's going to happen here. We are all in this together. We live here. We, we have the same family values. We want the same thing for our kids and our community. Uh, so we all need to band together. Unity in the face of hate. Jewish and Muslim leaders on the Sun Coast are facing a common threat as we see an increasing number of threats and crimes against places of worship. Tonight, we'll hear from some of those leaders and find out what can be done to keep everyone safe. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the rise of religious hate crimes coming up, but first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight in Englewood, where we're learning more about a deputy-involved shooting. It's the second time deputies at the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office have shot a suspect in the past three weeks. The shooting happened Friday night when deputies responded to a domestic disturbance call on Hamlet Drive in Englewood. Deputies say they found Casey Roberts in the front yard holding a knife and threatening to kill himself. A deputy used a taser gun on Roberts. They say he then lunged towards the deputies who responded by shooting him in the leg. It turns out Roberts used to be a deputy with the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office. He has had three DUIs on his record and now faces charges of domestic battery for allegedly hitting his wife and four-year-old child. Neighbors say there have been other incidents. I just hope that that's it and it doesn't happen again, you know, because I don't want to see this people be afraid to come to an area like this. Roberts is in the hospital. Both deputies are on paid leave. Three other deputies are also on leave for fatally shooting an Englewood man who allegedly jumped at them with two knives. That shooting took place in late February. New developments on the murder of a Palmetto woman. The Levy County Sheriff's Office says it's located a body believed to be Patricia Freeman. The suspect, 26-year-old Roy Nichols, was arrested in West Virginia Saturday morning. Freeman's daughter, Kayla Coya, was also arrested with him. Palmetto police are beginning the process to bring Nichols back to Manatee County to stand trial. Coyler faces charges of accessory to murder after the fact. What to do in the case of an explosion? A disaster drill has just wrapped up at the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport to train emergency crews in case of an explosion on a plane full of passengers. More than 200 airport staff and emergency crews took part. The airport is required to do this type of drill once every three years. We'll have more on how the simulation went coming up tonight at 11. An update on Sarasota's comprehensive treatment court. Judge Erica Quartermain is leading the program, which helps addicts and offenders with mental health issues escape the cycle of the street to jail. It's since January. 13 people have enrolled in the program. They are screened by Centerstone, then put into an assisted living facility where they can get treatment. By putting people into what we call permanent supportive housing, just not housing, but supportive housing, we're seeing tremendous success. Participants are also able to find work through the county's shift program. At the panel discussion today, mental health experts said sustainability is the key. And since many of the candidates for treatment are homeless, finding permanent housing needs to be a priority. Sarasota's downtown farmer's market is relocating temporarily because of construction starting May 6th. The market will move a couple of blocks north. It will stretch from Main, to Main Street to 1st Street and Lemon to Orange Avenue. Organizers say the construction going on at the regular location creates a safety hazard for vendors and customers. Now to Venice, where the demolition crews are tearing down the old public library on South Nokomis Avenue. Sarasota County closed the library last year because of mold. The property is expected to be cleared later this spring. The new library will be built on the same site. There's a new way to get around Siesta Key today. Sarasota County Area Transit is launching its new trolley service, Siesta Key Breeze. It is free and is part of a six-month pilot program. The trolley runs from the north end of Siesta Village, makes several stops at beach access points, and goes all the way south to Turtle Beach. It runs from 8 a.m. until midnight every night. Now for a check on our weather. Let's go to ABC7 meteorologist Josh Stone. Josh. All right, Alan, an absolutely beautiful day today with lots of sunshine, temperatures climbing into the mid-70s. Right now it's 67 degrees outside with lots of sunshine. Still, we're going to have a beautiful sunset tonight at 733. 
Uh, actually, 742, that's the sunset officially tonight. Uh, humidity is low, though. It's pretty dry out there, all due to high pressure and control. And you know what today was? It's the first day of spring and started earlier this morning. And it's when the sun's rays are directly on top of the equator. This is the uh, spring equinox. Equa means equal, basically all around the world, 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime of, uh, of, of darkness. So uh, that's the case for this first day of spring. And again, dry air on top of us, keeping our radar very quiet. And as far as our overnight, we can expect clear skies and temperatures will fall into the mid 50s to lower 50s tonight, but it looks like we will rebound back into the 70s tomorrow. And we do have a beautiful forecast in store for you, but it looks like there will be some chance of rain in it. And I'll talk more about that when I come back, Alan. And my daughter Ann did the thing with the egg today. She put eggs and they stand on end. That's what happens during the equinox. And a broom it was very impressive. Really? Yes. Well, good for her. I'd like to hear more about that sometime. All right. Thanks a lot, Josh. And still to come, threats and hate crimes against Jews and Muslims are happening across the country and right in our own backyard. Find out what local religious leaders are saying about it when we return. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular received a J.D. Power Award for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-297-5313, go to ConsumerCellular.com or visit a Target or Sears store today. Are you paying too much for your cable or satellite TV? The U.S. government passed a bill mandating free over-the-air digital transmission of all broadcast network television channels. That means with the new TV Freeway digital antenna, you can get free HD programming from your favorite broadcast networks 24-7 without a bill. You just plug it into the back of your TV and start watching all of your favorite broadcast programs for free. There are no contracts to sign, no hidden fees, and no monthly fees. Just free HD broadcast TV. Take it with you anywhere. Call or go online now to get your TV freeway stick for the incredibly low price of only $14.99. But wait, call or click now and you can get a second TV freeway stick for a second TV. Just pay a separate fee. But you have to order right now. Call 1-800-809-5196 to get your TV freeway. Call now or go to tvfreeway.com. So call 1-800-809-5196. This offer's not in any store. Call now. Luxury for less at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $249 per month or a 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We're located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. There's a lot of things dividing the Jewish and Muslim communities, but the one thing they have in common and one of the things bringing them together is concern over the rise in threats and vandalism at synagogues, Jewish community centers, and mosques. ABC7's Adam Cellini joins us with more. Adam. Yeah, Alan, this uh, problem it has reared its ugly head here in our area enough times to have several people on edge. As Rabbi Michael Shergel knows all too well, the common thread through most major Jewish holidays is hate and persecution. Whether it was the Persians or the Babylonians or the Romans um, or the Germans, the general story is there were people that hated us. We fought back. We 
endured. Now, Shergel and the 400 families who visit Temple Sinai are watching a new story unfold, and America is the antagonist. We have these parents who are hearing about all these threats to Jewish institutions and uh, wondering if something's going to happen here. Since January, Jewish cemeteries in three major U.S. cities were vandalized, and more than 100 Jewish institutions have received bomb threats, including this Jewish community center near Miami. This is the second time within 10 days. This is not right, not right. The rise now seems out of control. In December, three swastikas were drawn outside Temple Sinai's day school of nearly 60 kindergarten and preschool students. We've uh, begun a dialogue on if and how we may, might increase security in our own building. And in March, the Anti-Defamation League, a group monitoring these Jewish hate crimes, included State College of Florida in a report listing hundreds of campuses where Nazi propaganda had been posted. The college says the sign wasn't up long and likely won't happen again since the school monitors all their posters on campus. As for the rest of society, civil rights attorney Andrea Flynn Mogensen expects state prosecutors will be cracking down. In Florida, a hate crime can elevate a misdemeanor to a third-degree felony. Political speech is First Amendment protected. However, there's a limitation on our First Amendment rights. You do not have a right to engage in what's considered hate speech. Shergel believes politicians failed to make this clear before the problem got out of hand. Because it wasn't denounced, it, it it was almost as if they were given permission. At the Islamic Society of Sarasota Bradenton, Shiraz Hassan has noticed the same disturbing trend. Before it was you know, certain right-wing groups would say this, or, you know, bloggers would say this, but now it's become mainstream. I mean, the politicians are saying it openly, uh, and it becomes accepted that, you know, you can say whatever you want against Muslims, and it's going to be okay. Three weeks after taking office, President Trump did speak out against hate speech and actions. We are a country that stands united in condemning hate and evil in all of its very ugly forms. Evil that is actually drawing two religions closer together. In Tampa, Jewish leaders were quick to aid their Muslim brothers and sisters after a mosque was set on fire. And after the travel ban, more religious leaders sent in calls and emails to the Islamic Society. We had to support you. We, we know that uh, you guys are going through a tough patch, and if you need anything, let us know. Hassan thanks outreach programs and an annual food festival at the mosque for sparking that positivity. Many people have never been to a mosque. They've never met a Muslim person. They've never spoken to them. As for Shergel, history has shown the Jewish people will persevere, but he admits he is being tested. It's hard. It's very hard in this situation. I want to see that things are going to progress. But we have such polarization right now in Congress. And Alan, the Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatee has actually sponsored training under national security experts for many of the institutions receiving threats here in town. And then thank you. Coming up, an extraordinary roundtable, a local rabbi live at an international forum on anti-Semitism in Paris, a representative from the Muslim community and the Sarasota Sheriff's Office. In a moment, we will take it to the trapezoid. Attention. This is an important message for anyone who has taken Xarelto or Pradaxa. If you or a loved one took the blood thinner medication Xarelto or Pradaxa and was then hospitalized for internal bleeding, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to serious, even fatal internal bleeding. If you suffered a stroke, heart attack, or serious internal bleeding, or if a loved one died after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call us now. Our network of attorneys have years of experience fighting the big pharmaceutical companies and is ready to fight for you. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto or Pradaxa who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke, or even death. Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You won't pay a thing unless your case is settled. Call today for a free confidential consultation. Don't fight this alone. Please call 800-928-6604. That is 800-928-6604. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a 
Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory, so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad, and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Welcome back. What's behind the increase in bomb threats at Jewish community centers and arson fires at mosques around the country, including in our own area? Since the beginning of the year, there have been more than 160 bomb threats at Jewish community centers around the country, including here on the Sun Coast. We have also seen vandalism and graffiti at synagogues and arson fires at mosques, including one in New Tampa just a few weeks ago. Some blame President Trump for being slow to condemn white supremacy groups and his flagrant rhetoric about Islamic extremism but there's there is there more going on and what should be done to keep uh, our Jewish and Muslim community safe joining us for more on tonight's topic is Captain John Walsh who oversees the investigations bureau at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office Hassan Shibley chief executive officer at Florida Center for American Islamic Relations or CARE and joining us by Skype from Paris France where he is taking part in an international conference on anti-semitism is the rabbi emeritus uh, Jeff Hunting of Sarasota's Temple Sinai and rabbi let me start with you what is this conference is all about and what are they saying in terms of why now? What's causing this uptick in anti-Semitism? The, uh, uh, the, the conference is really a, it's a small conference. It's uh, 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 sponsored by the American Cathedral here in uh, Paris and uh, was uh, uh, arranged by their pastor, uh, Lucinda Laird, who is a friend of mine. Uh, and I will share the, uh, the, the, the pulpit with, uh, with Rabbi uh, Tom Cohn, who is the conservative rabbi here in Paris. Primarily, it's about anti-Semitism in both countries, both in France and in the United States. And uh, there is a contrast in the two. Uh, so it should be very, very interesting to uh, to kind of flesh that out. Well, when I'm, we're having... I'm sorry. When we're talking about the anti-Semitism that we're seeing here at home, I mean, some people have, have uh, blamed it on, on the presidential campaign and as we said in the intro, uh, perhaps President Trump did not knock down some of these extremists uh, quick enough. Do you agree with that, or are you seeing something else? I think it's really hard to say, uh, but, but um, and I don't mean to sidestep that, uh, because I'm not, I don't think that, that, that Donald Trump created the situation right now. In other words, I think these groups were operating. Um, what I do believe and uh, is the, you cannot separate the, um, the threats to the Jewish community from threats to the, to the Muslim community in the United States and in Sarasota. Um, because what we ha are seeing is a marginalization of what I would call the other, uh, whether you're Jews or whether you're Muslims, someone, uh, groups that some people in the United States don't really believe are really Americans and that we're really foreign. And I think this was if it wasn't created, I believe it was exacerbated uh, by the campaign. Well, uh, Hassan, the yeah, and, and Hassan, Hassan, let me ask you this. Was there an uptick because of the campaign, or really does it go back to 9-11 to or even before that? Well, there has been a tremendous increase over the last year in anti-Muslim hate crimes, and we actually pinpointed it starting at the time when Donald Trump started saying that he wants to ban Muslims, that he thinks Islam hates us, that he thinks Muslims should have special registries and mosques should be spied on. Unfortunately, that's led to an over 500 percent increase in anti-Muslim hate crimes and hate incidents in the state of Florida. And unfortunately, we're also seeing an uptick in anti-Semitic hate attacks and, and attacks against uh, 
Jewish cemeteries, Jewish houses of worship, which really shows, as the good rabbi said, that anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are linked together, and we have to challenge it together. And the silver lining to all of this is I do believe it's brought the Muslim and Jewish community stronger together. And, and we did, because they, actually my rabbi at my synagogue went to that mosque uh, and, and held uh, services and, and the joint uh, service with the Muslim community uh, right after that fire in, in New Tampa. Uh, it, Captain, let me ask you this. Uh, how busy has it gotten for the, for the sheriff's office in terms of, of threats that are coming in uh, and intelligence coming in that these things are happening around our community? Uh, I think we've been pretty fortunate that we haven't experienced those things. And I, and I would credit that to our relationships uh, with uh, Muslims and Jewish uh, communities uh, and our partners. We, we've always for years had a dialogue and it's been two way. You know, uh, it's not been a singular uh, avenue. We, we've always talked to each other. When you mean dialogue, uh, are, is it basically asking both the Jewish and Muslim communities if uh, you receive, you know, if not an overt threat, threatening language or calls to, to report that immediately? Uh, yeah, we, we, anything that they need, you know, we're, we're responsive to anywhere in, in the community. But yeah, the, they, they know thing. anybody in, in Sarasota County has a means to contact us about what, what they hear or see. And, and they've always been good about that, um, every community within Sarasota County. And in, the, in our next segment, I want to get into some of the, the technology out there and the federal funds that are available to uh, religious organizations for, to uh, monitor their facilities. But uh, Hazan, we only have a, a minute left here. How often? Do you hear in our area threats coming into a mosque or uh, a, a community center uh, that you have to respond to? It's happening very, very frequently, unfortunately. Almost every month we hear about a different mosque being burnt down or somebody calling a mosque and threatening to shoot up the children and, and blow it up. So there is an increase in hate crimes, but there's also a tremendous increase in shows of solidarity from our Jewish brothers and sisters, our Christian brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in law enforcement, uh, people of all different religions, atheists, Hindu Sikhs coming together to say we will not let America be a nation of hate. We will stand together because an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. Okay, we are just getting started with our discussion. It will continue right after we check on the weather, so stay with us. Is a debt beating you down? You need a discipline. You need... The Debt Ninja. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, you could be facing wage garnishments, levies, liens, property seizure, cancellation of business license, closure of business. The Debt Ninja fights your IRS debt. That's why you need The Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja has found the best companies in the country who are on your side to fight debt. Want to learn if you qualify for the IRS Financial Hardship Program? Stop the IRS from garnishing your wages. Even if your bank account has been seized, if you have undeclared taxes, if you have existing IRS debt, it's not too late to call, so grab your phone now. Call the Debt Ninja at 800-945-0083. That's 800-945-0083. Settle your IRS debt to get the power of the Debt Ninja. Dial this number now, 800-945-0083. Florida Studio Theater presents Piano Men, held over by popular demand through April 2nd. Attributing the virtuosity and elegance of the Piano Man, Piano Men features the works of 20th century's best pianists and songwriters. Featuring songs from music icons such as Billy Joel, Stevie Wonder, and Barry Manilow, don't miss what critics are saying is energetic with fun and playful performances that evokes hits of an era. Piano Men is held over by popular demand. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941-366-9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. You only have one life. Are you gambling with it? One in three adults have high blood pressure. Not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time. Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. Don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash HPV. It's no small wonder anybody loves it all. I just love art that moves me. No small I mean really moves me. Wow. Sunset Fiat of Sarasota presents No Small Wonder. High performance style. 
Let the art of fiat move you. Our discussion of threats and hate crimes against religious minorities continues in a moment, but right now let's get a check on our forecast from ABC7 meteorologist Josh Stone. Josh. All right, Alan, thanks so much. Current temperatures look like this right now, 67 in Sarasota, 69 in Venice, 72 in Northport, 74 in Arcadia. And our almanac today, we topped out at 76. Our average is 77. No rain to speak about today. We really could use some rain as we're down, uh, well, over a four inches and four four and a quarter inches so what we really could use some rain looks like we may have some shower activity coming our way on thursday but that's going to be on the isolated side maybe 20 to 30 percent chance and most of those will be inland as far as our radar looks right now everything very quiet we can expect a cool and clear evening for tonight lots of sunshine in this forecast but as we get into thursday well, that's when the showers could ramp up, but I think most of those will be inland. As far as our water vapor image, a lot of tan color on this graphic here. It shows us the dry air above us, thanks to area of high pressure in control, not only of the Sunshine State, but of the entire southeastern region. Future cast remains very quiet. Now, a lot to show you here. You can see the general clockwise flow of the clouds, thanks to that area of high pressure. Maybe a few showers could get going. Uh, late tomorrow and Wednesday in the Everglades if you're heading down that direction. But for us, I think we're going to remain very quiet. The high tide will be at 7.04 tomorrow evening. And uh, as far as your sunrise, at 7.33 tomorrow morning. For the boaters, you're taking your boat out in the afternoon. The winds look to pick up out of the north at 10 to 15 knots. Sea is just offshore 2 to 3 feet. And the beach goers, 74 degrees will be the temperature at the beach. Overnight low tonight will be 54 degrees, clear and cool for tomorrow's high 76. And as we go through the next several days, a lot of sunshine this forecast and pretty average like conditions as temperatures climb into the upper 70s and even lower 80s. But the best chance of rain will be Thursday, 20 to 30 percent chance. Most of the showers, at least at this time, from what I'm looking at at the forecasting models, look to be inland. That could change. A few showers could sneak towards the coast, but right now it looks like most of the activity will remain inland. And again, it's a pretty small chance that we'll even see shower activity. And then Friday and Saturday, a little bit breezy, but the weekend does look wonderful with lots of sunshine in our forecast. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular received a JD Power Award for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-297-5313, go to ConsumerCellular.com or visit a Target or Sears store today. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. 
Hurry in to Sunset Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, and Sarasota for big savings on some of America's best vehicles. Over 100 standard and available safety features make the new Chrysler Pacifica a safe investment for any family. And right now, you can buy one for just $24,999 or save up to $11,000 on a new Ram Crew Cab during Ram Truck Month. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram in Sarasota. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing threats and hate crimes against Jews and Muslims, including in our own area. Our guests tonight are Captain John Walsh of the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office, Hassan Shibley of Florida's Center for American Islamic Relations, and joining us by Skype from Paris is Rabbi Emeritus Jeff Hunting of Sarasota's Temple Sinai. And Rabbi, let me start again with you. When you were at Temple Sinai, um, what did you and the synagogue do in order to take advantage of programs run by the federal government to add surveillance cameras and, and use technology to make sure that the synagogue and your congregants were safe? We uh, actually, the, the, our building is, is relatively new. It was uh, completed just uh, 11 years ago. And so at the time, you know, it's, it was really the first post 9-11 uh, synagogue um, a building in, in Sarasota. So we had the benefit of, uh, of the FBI who advised us as to the uh, security necessary. Having said that, um, this era now has raised our concern and there are many in our congregation who don't, who believe that our, our security is inadequate. And so we're, we're studying that right now. But because of uh, the way the synagogue was developed, it was uh, re relatively recently, this building, we did have that benefit where other synagogues could not. Captain, do you find that synagogues and, and mosques and, and churches around here are adequately protected in terms of use of cameras and technology? I do know that on, on, uh, on Shabbat, uh, many times there is a, a sheriff's uh, deputy that I is there. I would imagine it's the same at, at mosques and, and, ch and churches. Is it enough? Well, I think the level of protection is up to the people who run the, you know, uh, individual um, locations, you know, and, and you, you have to be satisfied and explain that to the people who would go to, to your synagogue or mosque, you know, why or why not you ha have certain mechanisms in place to prevent, you know, acts of violence. Uh, but locally, you know, because of our communication and, and ability to communicate, um, we, we, we always have extra, you know, protection uh, security. Uh, you know, and especially if there's any heightened thing globally or locally. And, and Hassan, what precautions do you take? Do you have somebody watching the back door? Right. Well, at Care Florida, we do offer a free safety and security training that we make available to all houses of worship and community centers, uh, including synagogues, churches, mosques, and, and other temples. And we do encourage people to have uh, basic security measures like having a greeter there, welcome everybody, um, having multiple exit points, but only one entrance point, and other basic sa safety and security uh, trainings, including having active shooter trainings. God forbid that's a worst case scenario. We hope it never ever happens, but it's important people uh, be prepared because in America, unfortunately, Unfortunately, you have more mass shootings in a year than you have days in a year with, with all the problems that we're dealing with. So it's important that we work together to be prepared, and we're offering that training to everybody. Uh, Captain, it's impossible to generalize, but when these things do happen and threats are called in, uh, I mean, does the sheriff's office investigate it? Does it go to federal authorities? How often do you find who's responsible for it? Yeah, we, we, we constantly are in contact with the FBI. Uh, the Secret Service, Homeland Security. Uh, we, we have personal uh, uh, contacts that we talk to frequently, usually you know one, once a week, you know, for various things, not not just this subject, but um, their, their their services and, and um, equipment are always available to us. Rabbi, where do you see this going? I mean, we, we're at a time in our nation's history where we are very polarized. Uh, politics is largely <laughs> responsible for it. Um, you know, how do we get past where we are right now in, in, in the short term? Well, I think, first of all, we have, to, we have to understand what it is. We have to define it. In other words, it's not the 1930s, thank goodness. Um, it is not anywhere near uh, the situation here in this country, which I love, in France. Um, and so we have to count our blessings in a certain sense. However, on the other side, I believe it's a quote attributed to Albert Einstein, uh, who uh, said that beware of the beginnings when he was uh, talking about the 1930s that were ignored. 
And the good news is that none of our communities are ignoring the beginnings, if they are beginnings of something worse. The fact that we're cooperating is, is with the other communities, especially the Muslim community, is, is, is a wonderful thing. And Hassan is right. It is a silver lining. But Where do I think it's We don't know. We don't know. You, you know, you said that it's not as acute or bad as it is, uh, is in, in France. But where you are there is, right now, there is a, a huge increase in anti-Semitism and anti-Islamophobia there. And I would imagine that both of you would be concerned that what is happening in Europe uh, does not, you know, come back to the U.S. and in, in to the same degree. Yes, the, uh, France has the largest Muslim population and the largest Jewish population in Europe. And uh, up until now, it's a, it's, a, it's a very different situation here. There's been hostility mostly um, from one community against the other, but mostly because of the Middle East and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, tens of thousands of Jews here in France have been forced to move from their neighborhoods to other safer parts of Paris and France. And we don't have that in the United States, thank goodness. So I think in that regard, um, I think it's more of a contrast than a comparison. Having said that, I think it's extremely, would be very unwise to underestimate what's happening. Uh, clearly these groups are coming out and we are under threat. And, uh, and, and, and so we'll, we'll, we'll respond to the threats as they come. Uh, Hassan, what can the local uh, Muslim community do uh, because, you know, it's not just the new administration and the, the, the campaign that we just went through. Since 9-11, uh, and with the concern about terrorism, uh, both what we see overseas and coming to our shores, uh, the Muslim community has had um, a difficult time more than any other community in many ways in terms of, uh, of saying that we are Americans, patriots, and we're, we're not the enemy. Well, I think it's important for people to recognize that Islamophobia is worse today than it was in the days after 9-11. After 9-11, about 40% of Americans had a negative image of Islam. Uh, today, it's well over 50%. In fact, over 50% of Americans polled uh, who don't know any Muslims said they would support forcing Muslims to wear special ID cards. And we know what the last group that was forced to wear special ID cards was the Jewish community. In fact, a good friend of mine, Rabbi Shapiro, said that what was being said, up, what's being said about Muslims today is the same as what was being said about Jews in Germany 70 years ago. So it's the same hatred and we have to tackle it uh, together. And it isn't connected. The University of Georgetown has done a study that's shown that Islamophobia is not connected to bad things done by Muslims because you have bad people in every religion that have done horrible things in the name of its religion. Rather, Islamophobia is connected to politicians who don't have real solutions to the real problems plaguing this country, scapegoating minority communities, and the over $200 million that have been spent to demonize Muslims in America. We have less than a minute left. Uh, Captain, you can't get into the politics of it all, but what can the sheriff's office and local law enforcement do uh, to make Jews, Muslims, Christians feel safer in their houses of worship? I, I think continue to do what we've always been doing and, and continue the dialogue. We, we're, we're at the table constantly. Uh, we talked to each other. I learned something earlier before we, we started this thing that I, I had no idea about. What and was that? Uh, and uh, I don't want to get into that. Okay. But, but it, was good, it was good information. We don't know what we don't know, you know. And to continue that dialogue, I mean, we'll continue to we'll live in the quality of life we have here in Sarasota County. Okay, let's take a quick break. And when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests. Plus, what some of our viewers are saying about President Trump's first two months in office. So stay with us. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them. And she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. 
Call now 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Welcome back. What's behind the rise in threats and hate crimes against the Jew, Jews and Muslim uh, communities, and what can be done to stop it? Our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Rabbi, let me start with you. I mean, this is what you're talking about in Paris right now. What do you hope to get out of this conference, and what do you want our viewers to take about where we are right now? Well, first of all, I want to be educated uh, about the situation here in France from people who are experiencing it firsthand, and uh, um, as well as to share what what, what's happening in the United States. And, uh, uh, but one of the things that in, in this country, um, virtually every politician has spoken out against anti-Semitism, uh, which is a very commendable. Well, there's, there's a presidential election coming up um, in next month, the first round. And they, uh, from right to left, they have, they have denounced anti-Semitism. I'd like to see that happen in the United States even more than it's happening. I, I hope that our leaders on both sides will uh, take this, uh, these threats against not just the Jewish community, but uh, the Muslim community as well, uh, as, 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 as serious and deserving of comment. And, and Captain, I would imagine it's a fairly new thing for people, whether they're going to the synagogue or to the mosque, uh, to have to be aware of what's happening outside the front door. Yeah, I think that that's the tough part, you know, is on wh whatever day of worship you choose. You know that now you have to be constantly aware of of a threat. You know you don't have that peace you used to have or thought you had, and and so. But I, I think we're doing a good job at, at normalizing a, a lot of that and working with the different organizations. And, and Hassan, I, I've noticed that the, uh, the the Muslim community is doing more in terms of outreach to the greater community, not just the Jewish community, but the the greater community. Are are you hoping these are are seeds that will sprout? In yeah. the near future. Well, I'm hoping these challenging times will push the community, the Muslim community, to continue to work to serve its neighbors. And through service, we build strong relationships. And our message is that our enemies can never destroy us as Americans. We can only destroy ourselves if we allow fear and hate to turn us against each other and be willing to undermine principles of liberty and justice that make America great. And I think we've got to work together to keep America a great nation where children of all people, regardless of their race or religion, can grow proud of who they are without fear of intimidation or harassment. Right. We'll have to leave it there. But before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about Friday's topic, the latest week of President Trump's first two months in office. The White House continues to defend the unsubstantiated claim President Obama wired tapped Donald Trump. Multiple federal judges halted the new version of the travel ban. President Trump also released his budget plan, which amps up military spending and slashes funding for domestic programs like Meals on Wheels. We asked you what you thought about the week in Washington. Shannon Zelinsky writes, eventually all the lies, diversions, and deceptions are going to catch up with him, and us snowflakes will be vindicated. We saw him for who he truly is, a charlatan of humongous proportions. Beverly Nelson writes, he is doing a great job cleaning up Obama's mess. Can't be an easy task. And Janice Notman writes, God bless our neighbors in the USA. Happy to be a Canadian. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And want to watch past roundtable discussions? They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Captain John Walsh oversees the Investigations Bureau at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. Hassan Shibley is the Chief Executive Officer at the Florida Center for American Islamic Relations. And Jeff Hunting is Rabbi Emeritus at Temple Sinai in Sarasota. He joined us, joined us tonight by Skype from Paris. And when we
we return, we'll have a final look at your weather, plus undermining Florida's judicial system. Orlando State Attorney is filing a motion against Governor Scott. Find out why in our prime time headlines. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-628-1251. 800-628-1251. For years, I've told everyone my Craftmatic adjustable bed was the greatest until I got the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has an adjustable pillow feature that's awesome. You're going to want one, too, when you see how little they cost. If you've ever had a bad night's sleep, call and price the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has so much more than other adjustables and still costs up to 50% less. Featuring a rising adjustable pillow rest, bedside power plugs, underbed night lights, and more. Available in all mattress types with optional heat and soothing massage. For as much as half the price of Tempur-Pedic Sleep Number and other adjustables, enjoy temporary relief of low back pain, nighttime heartburn, mild arthritis. Adjust the rising pillow feature to help align your head, neck, and shoulders. See for yourself with our 30-day in-home trial. So call Call and price one today for less, up to 50% less. You get so much more and it still costs less. You got to see how little they cost. Call 1-800-237-0214. That's 1-800-237-0214. Call 1-800-237-0214. Call now. Your primetime headlines are coming up in the moment, but right now, well, let's get the final check on our weather with meteorologist Josh Stone. Josh. All right, Alan, you know, I did some research here, and here is the history of egg balancing. It's actually an old Chinese tradition is done during the Chinese springtime, symbolizes new life. They take an egg, and that's supposed to symbolize new life. And can it really be done? Yes, well, your daughter had done it, so it can be done, but the question is, can you balance an egg on any other day? And... From what I read on the internet, uh, you probably can, but I'll leave that to you at home to try. 67 degrees is our current temperature right now. Clear skies, humidity at 40%, so it's dry out there. We hit a high of 76. That's, a, that's just below the average of 77, but basically right where we should be. Really could use some rain, though, as we're down well over four inches of rain, and looks like we may have some rain coming our way by later this week. But for the most part, everything is very quiet thanks to high pressure that's in control. Our radar is pretty much quiet as well. We have this tan color on the water vapor imagery shows us where the dry air is aloft, all due to an area of high pressure. Works clockwise and temperatures in Texas right now uh, very warm, well above their average. Earlier today, the temperature in Dallas was in the lower 90s. Uh, clear skies for us on our future cast, and that's going to be the case for several days. So lots of sunshine in this forecast if you like the sunshine. But like I said, on Thursday, looks like that will be the best chance for rainfall. But it's not much of a chance, only 20 to 30 percent, and most of that rainfall will probably be inland. As far as the boating forecast, southeasterly wind becoming north tomorrow at 10 to 15 knots. Seas offshore anywhere from 2 to 3 feet with a moderate chop in the bays. 54 degrees for the overnight low tonight and clear skies, oh, clear and cool. Average low at this time of the year is supposed to be 58, so it'll be below that for this evening. 76 once again for our high on Tuesday and a lot of sunshine in the forecast, but like I said, the best chance for rain happens on Thursday. Most of that will be inland. The winds will pick up on Friday and Saturday, but temperatures for the most part looking pretty nice. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom. 
the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? They found me a place for what she could afford and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe and they just helped every step of the way and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service and you can trust them to help you. Call right now to get your free Senior Care Compass eBook. Find out about the five best kept secrets on financing senior care and assisted living. Call now, 800-290-0352, 800-290-0352. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right, we will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call for your free author submission kit at Now for your primetime headlines, bombshell testimony from the director of the FBI, James Comey, today. For the first time, he confirms the Bureau is investigating Russia's meddling in the 2016 election and alleged contacts with the Trump campaign. He is also rejecting the president's unsubstantiated wiretapping claims. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest from the Capitol Hill. Unprecedented, FBI Director James Comey on the public record confirming his agency is investigating Russia's alleged contact with the Trump campaign. Because it is an open, ongoing investigation and is classified, I cannot say more about what we are doing and whose conduct we are examining. Comey on Russian President Vladimir Putin's possible motive in meddling in the 2016 election. Putin hated Secretary Clinton so much that... that the flip side of that coin was he had a clear preference for the person running against the person he hated so much. But on possible collusion with Trump associates, no comment from Comey or NSA chief Mike Rogers. Investigating it and having proof of it are two different things. So you can continue to look for something, but continuing to look for something that doesn't exist doesn't matter. Like the president who tweeted about the hearing, House Intelligence Committee Republicans mostly highlighted the leaks of classified information. The Democrats focus on the Russia investigation and this extraordinary moment. With respect to the president's tweets about alleged wiretapping directed at him by the prior administration, I have no information that supports those tweets. Comey shut down Trump's unsubstantiated claims that President Obama wiretapped him. The president has said he meant surveillance when referring to wiretapping. I get that you guys want to know the end of the book right now, but we're on the first chapter of this process. The president is not backing down or apologizing for his wiretapping claims. The FBI and NSA chiefs would neither confirm nor deny surveillance of Trump or his associates. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Overshadowed today, the confirmation hearings for President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Neil Gorsuch. President Trump tapped him to fill the seat of the late Antonin Scalia. Republicans are applauding his nomination, but Democrats are still bitter. President Obama's Supreme Court nominee never got a hearing. Is part of a Republican strategy to capture our judicial branch of government. That is why the Senate Republicans kept this Supreme Court va seat vacant for more than a year. These days, we sometimes hear judges cynically described as politicians in robes, seeking to enforce their own politics rather than striving to apply the law impartially. But if I thought that were true, I'd hang up the robe. 
Gorsuch's nomination is expected to go to the full Senate in April. The Florida man accused of killing his pregnant ex-girlfriend and an Orlando police sergeant was in court today. It was a short status hearing for Mark Keith Lloyd. Next Tuesday, an expert will be brought in to determine Lloyd's competency. Lloyd is asking to represent himself at trial. The case is fueling a battle between Orlando's state attorney and Governor Rick Scott. Scott pulled Aramis Ayala off Lloyd's case after announcing she wouldn't seek the death penalty. Today, Ayala made a legal motion charging the governor's intervention could undermine the judicial system. Scott says he is comfortable with his decision. Suncoast home builder Carlos Baruf is about to start his biggest construction project ever, revising Florida's state constitution. But today, the man who hired Baruf for the job, Governor Rick Scott, is being asked, how does be, be, being a big-time developer qualify you for building a better constitution? It's revised every 20 years. The 37-member commission chaired by Baruf held its first opening meeting in the Senate chambers this morning. Any changes the panel recommends will go before voters on the November ballot in 2018. Sixty percent of voters have to support it for it to go into effect. After we either select some ballot issues or not select some, the ultimate deciders will be the public. And that is where the rubber meets the road. Nineteen members of the commission were appointed by Governor Scott, including the chairman, Carlos Baruf. Baruf is the CEO of Manatee-based Medallion Homes. He has donated more than $75,000 to Governor Scott's Let's Get to Work Political Action Committee. Scott appointed him to the Southwest Florida Water Management District, the Sarasota Manatee Airport Authority, and State College of Florida's Board of Trustees. Baruf lost the Republican Senate primary to Marco Rubio last year. He's a well-respected business person uh, in the Sarasota area, and I know from my experience with him, he's going to work very hard uh, and run a very good commission. What Have a good day. about Bye -bye. constitutional law, though? Governor Scott did not answer that final question. What does Carlos Baruf know about constitutional law? Despite the end of a policy allowing Cubans who reach American shores to automatically stay, many continue to make the dangerous journey by sea. The Coast Guard says it has intercepted 65 Cubans trying to reach Florida since January 12th. That's when former President Obama ended the policy of wet foot, dry foot. Cubans are no longer accepted as refugees. Now they must have a visa or prove a credible fear of persecution like migrants from other countries. The Coast Guard caught nearly 2,000 Cubans in the three months before the end of the policy. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.